Happy holidays, everybody. And Tony here with a tribute to a Christmas special from a Disney cartoon I remembered enjoying ever since I was a kid. I'm, of course, talking about The Worst Holiday Ever from The Weekenders, which aired on UPN on December 2, 2001. This episode was directed by Steve Lyons, and it was written by the show's creator, Doug Langdale, alongside Evan Gore and Heather Lombard. I remembered enjoying The Weekenders ever since I was a nine-year-old boy when I caught this on the Disney Channel. The main reason for enjoying this show was because of the four main characters, Tino the Snarker, Laura the Athlete, Carver the wannabe cool guy, and Tish the Brainiac. All four of these characters had something really likable and something aspirational to enjoy ever since I was at that tender age. I enjoyed Tino's snarky comments and how he was able to express himself using his trademark sarcasm. I also enjoyed Lore and how she was able to prove herself physically and how she did not want to be like the other girls, thus making her a complete tomboy. I kind of enjoyed Carter and his corny jokes as well as his various failed attempts at picking up girls and trying to be cool. But I really, really loved Tish. She was actually my favorite character because I always looked up to the smart ones ever since I was a very little boy, and Tish was definitely aspirational. She loved Shakespeare. She was very passionate about the arts and sciences and literature, and she was extremely articulate in how she was expressing herself in every given situation. And looking back at this show, it was enjoyable because it reminded me of the activities I used to do when I was a kid, such as spending my weekends watching all my favorite shows on television, going to movies, eating out at certain restaurants, having fun activities like going to the beach, or even hanging out with my family, hanging out with certain friends, and just a huge barrage of activities I enjoyed whenever school was out. That was definitely a microcosm of what The Weekenders was. However, looking back at this show as a grown-up, there are certain facets about The Weekenders that haven't really held up, such as the characters not being particularly deep, but fitting a certain archetype. Obviously, Tino is someone who is the snarker and uses sarcastic comments and is someone who seems to have a punchline in every given moment. Lore is the tomboy athlete who is so passionate about sports and proves her worth in said sports and is not like the other girls. Carver is the guy who tries so hard to be cool and fashionable, but sometimes he feels that certain missteps would mean that he would fail at it. And Tish is the typical brainy girl who also has a passion for Shakespeare. Even though there's nothing particularly too deep about these characters, at least there was something enjoyable and something that will always be ingrained in my memory. In fact, looking back at Weekenders, this is kind of a microcosm of what kids love to do every weekend, from going to the beach, going to the arcade, to even hanging out at their favorite pizza place. This is what the show encapsulates, and I still respect the Weekenders for doing something like that and really rolling with it. Therefore, the Weekenders, at least to me, is early 2000s, incarnate. From the overall look of the show, which is a lot smoother than Klasky Chupo style of animation, to the themes being brought up, to just the show being about four friends doing a lot of things throughout the weekend and just enjoying each other's company. This particular holiday special, the worst holiday ever, was one that I remembered enjoying ever since I was a kid, and I also remembered it for the song that the Weekenders gang were singing, and that was It's a Holiday, which was extremely catchy, and I had a lot of wonderful memories with that song and how much it brought a smile to my face. It's one of those episodes that still managed to leave me thoroughly entertained, 
and it's one that I still enjoy to this very day. So the main four celebrate the holidays in their own special way, such as Lore celebrating Christmas, Tino celebrating the winter solstice, Tish celebrating Hanukkah, and Carver celebrating Kwanzaa. The kids are also excited to spend a holiday weekend with snow alongside Laura's grandma, and they hop on her old rundown truck, and once they end up going to their journey, my favorite song is heard sung by the main four. And this was a definite highlight because of how catchy this tune was and just how adorable that bobbing head dog was in Laura's grandma's car. I thought it was a very fun song. And when you have the likes of Jason Marsden, Gray Delisle, Phil Lamar, and Kath Susie singing their hearts out as their characters and having fun with the song, you know that they're about to bring you something very fun, very warm-hearted, and absolutely amusing. And they did so with such great aplomb. Unfortunately, their holiday weekend prospects are scuppered because Trooper Sue has stated that the mountains that they will be spending a snowy Christmas at is covered in such a huge blizzard, so the roads are suspended. At first, all hope seems lost for the main four, especially when each of them tell about their worst holiday. Laura starts off with her worst Christmas ever. Every holiday season, her PE coach, Coach Colson, would come into the McQuarrie's house because according to her, her family has a lot of kids, especially considering the number of brothers that she has, and Coach Colson doesn't have any kids of his own, so he just thought that he would be a guest in their house bringing in his signature mashed potatoes. That is until Lore, when she was a nine-year-old girl, mind you, found out something that changed the course of the holidays forever, and that was Coach Colson spilling mashed potatoes on the floor because of just how slippery it was and trying to pick it all back up again and even using his hands to lick whatever remnants of the mashed potatoes was there on the floor to put it back on the serving bowl which has disgusted Lore. This even got to the point where she did not want to eat any of the mashed potatoes, let alone the contaminated ones, mind you, that she tried to evade from eating them. At least she did not touch them, which has unfortunately left her family reeling with sickness and their tummies hurt so much, in which Laura ended up stating that the bad news was the mashed potatoes that they were being served were picked up from the floor by Coach Coulson, and they were dirty. Tino then joins in this dirge with his worst winter solstice ever. And this is the one I did enjoy because we understand that Tino has a single mom. And when looking back at his childhood, when his dad was gone, he feels rather sad without him. And it may not be that obvious, but even his mother was kind of hurting that the divorce had this effect on Tino. And Mrs. Tonatini even encourages Tino that if ever he gets angry at his mom or his dad, he's feel free to do so. And Tino just says, okay. But you can really see that little Tino is quite sad and he feels that his family is not the same ever since his mom and dad got divorced. So it was rather difficult for him to cope with this when he was a very little boy. His mom reassures him that it's just going to be her and her son for the rest of their lives. That is until an old fuddy-duddy by the name of Toadie Weimer ends up being invited by Mrs. Tonatini for dinner. And moods have not really been improving as she is so condescending towards Mrs. Tonatini that she is a divorcee and she just finds her really below her type. And she even makes condescending remarks on Tino stating that a divorcee's child like him might as well be also fed meat in order for him to be at a much normal weight because the vegetarian stuff that Tino's mom cooks isn't really enough for him. To make things worse, 
her great nephew Drake shows up and he is a total delinquent. Granted, he doesn't bully Tino, but what he does in the kitchen, messing it up and thrashing it, is very reminiscent of just how much this punk got away with the trouble that he was causing, thus causing Tino and his mom to spend their winter solstice in the van. As soon as the frost develops, they then discover that it's snowing. However, the snow is just far too deep for them, and they end up being snowed in, which then also leads Tish, after Tino makes a remark at how squeamish she was at rabbit jerky, to tell her tale of woe about her worst Hanukkah ever. It all started with Mrs. Katsufrakis serving Tish and her husband slices of knish, and each of the slices contain a small piece of paper containing the name of the person they have to give a gift to. Tish ended up getting Aunt Deet's name because Aunt Deet is also a huge fan of cats and coffee mugs. As soon as her extended family arrive, especially her cousin Doug and his sister Dugovina, Dugovina said that she didn't have a slice of the knish, but she ended up giving Tish a gift, and to Tish's joy, it was a Lady Macbeth backpack. However, Tish's guilty conscience made her realize that she should also give a gift to Dugovina, and in order not to disappoint Dugovina, she ends up giving her an unworn sweater. However, here's where the twist is concerned. That unworn sweater was actually given by Aunt Deet originally to Tish, but she never wore it. This misunderstanding causes Dogovina to not speak to Tish until next year, and for the pet monkey Oliver to also be justifiably pissed at her, thus leaving poor Aunt Deet crying thinking that Tish did not like her sweater. Then it's Carver's turn to tell about his worst Kwanzaa ever, and compared to the rest of his friends, it's not really that bad, especially considering that his only tale of woe was that he had mismatched socks. Sure, he did try to embellish it with the attack of the locusts, the flood, and Vikings, but regardless, his tale was just nothing compared to what Lore, Tino, and Tish had to go through, especially where Tino was concerned. Come the next day and the snow is cleared, and Trooper Sue, although she's happy to say that the snow is cleared, the mountain still ended up being closed. So our main four ended up being completely disillusioned, but Granny McQuarrie had enough of their squabbling and enough of their bitching so it was time for her to tell her little tale of woe about the worst holiday she ever had to experience. And mind you, it was a true story, at least according to her. As Granny McQuarrie and Great Granny McQuarrie were collecting berries to use as ingredients for their goose liver soup, they encountered a turkey who was trapped. Unfortunately, the horde of turkeys managed to catch the action, and they thought that Great Granny McQuarrie and Granny McQuarrie were the hunters. And of course, a chase ensues, to the point where the two women ended up being in a cave with a hibernating bear as their company, though they dared not disturb it. At least they ended up spending their holidays in the cave, complete with snowmade amenities and making use of what the cave had to offer and especially what the snow had to offer. Just as they were about to make their escape, they were then chased again by the turkeys. But as soon as they fell at the gorge, they thought their lives were gonna be over. But the same turkey they saved returned the favor, pulled them up with Granny McQuarrie carrying Great Granny McQuarrie on her back, and they managed to make peace with the turkey, thus stating that the McQuarries never eat turkey during Christmas, except for other holidays such as Thanksgiving and the 4th of July. So looking at the main four stories, at least they were with their families. At least they had a home to stay in, and at least they had the company of each other. 
whereas with Granny Macquarie, she only had Great Granny Macquarie as her company as she was also in the wild gathering berries as ingredients for her traditional goose liver soup. And looking back at each of these stories, there's also something about each of the main four's characteristics that are a lot more fleshed out. In Lore's story, even though she is the total antithesis of a girly girl and is a girl jock, she is not dumb. She is resourceful and she actually thinks really well on her feet and follows her instincts, especially when it comes to contaminated mashed potatoes. With Tino's story, you do get the feeling that he uses sarcasm to cope with the pain of his parents' divorce and as a defense mechanism, as a means to protect himself. In Tish's story, sure, Tish may be a perfectionist. Sure, she may be intelligent. Sure, she may be well-read. But when it comes to her certain plans, not all of them are that wonderfully thought out, especially with what happened with her whole debacle with Dugovina and Aunt Deet, as well as Oliver the monkey being affected by this. Carver, sure, yes, he is the wannabe cool guy, but when it comes to sweating about the small details, that's his biggest weakness. And more often than not, he makes a mountain out of a molehill. And looking at Granny McQuarrie's story, at least hers was about survival, because the main four still have families and they still have nice homes to live in. But Granny McQuarrie and Great Granny McQuarrie had to rough it up in the wild. So in a way, at least their stories managed to find a connection with each other. Even though Granny McQuarrie kind of contradicts herself by saying that the main lesson was all about not eating wild turkeys. But regardless, it's still about being together with the people you care about. At least not all hope is lost, as Tino, Lore, Carver, and Tish make the best out of their holiday season with whatever snow is there, and they even have a nice sing-along. And the episode manages to end on a rather happy and satisfactory note. So looking back at the worst holiday ever, I still enjoy it to this very day. The main four stories were absolutely entertaining and it is just fun to know that looking back at these stories when you tell them as a kid they do have a lot of gravity when you're in that situation but looking back as an adult it still sticks with you but it's not as bad as you think it is and Granny McCory's story as outlandish and absolutely over the top it was still managed to keep me thoroughly entertained. And it's not just the likes of Jason Marsden's snarky, smart mouth, sarcastic Tino, Great Alliles, rough, tough, sporty, yet likable lore, Philomar's cool, fashionable, fun carver, and Kath Susie's articulate, intelligent, and prim Tish that make this episode great, Unless I forget about Kath Susie's really fun delivery as Trooper Sue. But there were also two other actresses who managed to steal the thunder out of the main four's feet. And those were none other than Carrie Kenny and Tracy Burns. Carrie Kenny gave such a memorable performance as Granny McQuarrie thanks to her rough, gruff, and gravelly voice which she put a lot of character and a lot of emotion to. I definitely enjoyed just how hilarious and just how rollickingly awesome Granny McQuarrie was, all thanks to Carrie Kenny. Special kudos also has to go to Tracy Burns and her Scottish accent being put to great use as Great Granny McQuarrie as she was a whole lot of fun to listen to. So the worst holiday ever from The Weekenders is still an enjoyable holiday treat. Even though parts of The Weekenders have not really held up so well to today's standards, at least in my opinion, it's a show that I can still look back fondly. And for those of you who enjoyed The Worst Holiday Ever, what'd you think of it? 
Did you like all four stories? Was there one story that you really loved and it stood above the rest? Did you also enjoy Granny McCory's story? Or did you feel like the whole holiday special was not to your liking? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's it for my tribute to the worst holiday ever from The Weekenders. Stay tuned much later for my tribute to A Kosher Christmas from Pepper Ann. So until then, happy holidays, everybody.